Hey YouTube, so I figured today I'd show you guys my Nintendo DS collection. Uh, normally you guys would be looking at my face, but uh, I'm feeling a little under the weather, so I figured you guys would just uh, stare at my table. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so my Nintendo DS collection isn't too massive or anything. I think it's about like 40 games or something like that. Uh, yeah, unfortunately enough, I do have some loose games. Uh, this was back... I got most of these back when GameStop was clearing out their DS stuff. And, uh, yeah, nowadays I won't buy loose DS games. Uh, uh, I've sworn off of buying loose DS games from here on out. But, uh, as it currently stands, I still have these ones loose, unfortunately. So, going through them, I have Bomberman. This is an okay-ish, uh, yeah, it's okay-ish, I don't know. I have Spectropes. This is a pretty decent little Pokemon ripoff. Uh, I really like the whole mining fit gimmick of this game. Uh, I guess of the Spectrum series. It's pretty cool in my opinion. This is Jake Power Firefighter. I've never played this actually. Uh, I've heard it's okay though. Feel the Magic XY XX. This is, this is like a WarioWare ripoff but like about <laughs> uh, a lot of innuendos for lack of a better term this was a launch game for the ds uh and this was like the weirdest launch game for the system we have space invaders 2 i love this game uh this and the first one are two of my favorite ds games these games are great pick them up if you can point blank ds this is a really fun adaptation of point blank on the nintendo ds and uh, it's weird how well the DS's touchscreen works for those light gun style games, you know. This is Dimension the Ward. This is a first person horror game, if I remember correctly. I haven't played this yet. Uh, I've always wanted to play it, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet, unfortunately. Uh, I've heard good things, but yeah. Elibits, I forget exactly the subtitle for this game, but uh, it's Elibits on Nintendo DS. This is actually a great, it's a uh, isometric isometric action-adventure game. This game's fantastic. Uh, it's nothing like the game on Wii. We have uh, Ge Geometry Wars Galaxies. Uh, Geometry Wars just isn't the same without Twin Sticks, in my opinion. So without the Twin Sticks setup, it's not as great. Uh... I'd say get the Wii or the PS4 one. Bust a Move Universe. I love Bust a Move. This is a really fun game. The one thing that sucks is this is the version that's like glitched and you can't beat the game. Uh, and then Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. It's a RPG based on Percy Jackson. It's okayish. All right, so I'm gonna go grab my games that are actually in cases. So I'll be right back. Alright you guys, so I'm back and unfortunately enough I forgot a couple of loose games. Uh but so I have all my com all of my complete games right next to me as well. So we're do these real quick and then we're get into the complete stuff, the good stuff, you know. So I got Spectral Force Genesis. Uh I haven't played this yet. I've heard it's kinda meh. This is Scourge the Hive. This is a really fun Metroidvania style game. Uh it's an isometric platformer, which makes it even cooler. So, yeah, I'd say check that one out. This is Def Jr. and The Root of Evil, if I recall correctly. Uh, I only played this for a couple minutes, but I don't know. It just didn't click with me. Uh, Barnyard Blast. This is, don't let the cover art and everything fool you. This is a Metroidvania-style game. And uh, it's actually pretty good, you know. International Track and Field. Eh, I didn't care for it. Monster Tail, this is a great, great Metroidvania game. That's like the third time I've said it, but, you know, that's the type of games these are. Uh, this game's fantastic, though. Uh, definitely look into it if you're in the Nintendo DS. Kirby Superstar Ultra. Uh, this is my favorite Kirby game. This is the only one that I thoroughly enjoy still. Uh, all the other ones are just kind of the same to me. Uh, but this is my favorite one. Uh, I, I need to get that complete box because that's... One of my favorite games as well for the DS. And then lastly, I don't know how well you guys can make this out, but this Dragon Quest Rocket Slime. This is one of my favorite DS games. It's a awesome isometric platformer where like you just kind of fling around uh, Rocket Slime and everything. It It's a great game. 
Alright, so moving on to complete games. We have Pokemon Ranger. Uh, this is a great, like, I don't know how to explain this game, but this is just such a unique concept. So, you play as a ranger, and you just, like, draw circles around Pokemon to catch Pokemon, and they assess, assist you and everything with calming down every other Pokemon. Uh, this is such a unique idea. I wish Game Freak would, like, I don't know, retool this and figure out a way to get it on Switch, because I really want another one of those games. This is Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. At one point in time, I had all of the Castlevania DS games. Nowadays, I only have this one because, uh, honestly, I didn't like the other two that much. Order of Ecclesia was just too hard. And, uh, what was the other one? Dawn of Sorrow. Uh, I just didn't care for it. But, uh, I love this game. This is my favorite Castlevania, excluding Super Castlevania 4. Uh, yeah, I love this game. The Wizard of Oz, Beyond the Yellow B Brick Road. This is a, believe it or not, turn-based RPG. Uh, really great graphics for the DS, so like really great sprite work and everything. Uh, unfortunately enough, this game's a little uncommon and goes for like 30 bucks on eBay. Uh, I'd say if you can find it for cheap to check it out, because it it is a fun game. I had fun playing through it, and it's only a couple hours long. Like I think it only took me like 10 hours to beat. Tony Hawk, American Skateland. This is a weird game because uh, back when I was a kid, when the DS first came out, this was one of the games I was most excited about and everything because, uh, so kind of to show you guys the box, this is like an actual full 3D Tony Hawk game. And uh, so I was really just uh, excited for it and everything, but I never played it. <laughs> You know, darndest thing when you're a kid and you don't have money is you don't get to play every game you want to play. So I never got to play this back then. I'm glad I'm glad I own it now because this is uh, really fun stuff. Uh, yeah, good game. Really cheap too. This is Henry Hatsworth in the Puzzling Adventure. This is a fantastic 2D platformer. Definitely look into this one. Uh, yeah, great game. It's got fantastic implementation of the touchscreen as well. This is Professor Layton and the Last Spectre. I haven't played this yet because uh, I want to check out the Professor Layton games at some point. I just don't know which one to start with. Uh, I know that this isn't the first one, so I know I shouldn't start with it. This is... Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. I own every Kingdom Hearts game. This is probably the worst Kingdom Hearts game, if I'm being honest. Like, so this is such a mixed bag game. Uh, I love the story and everything. I love the story as it surrounds Roxas and Shion and Axel's friendship and everything. But like, as a game, this is such a slog. Uh, yeah, I'd really say to just get like the Kingdom Hearts uh, 1.5, 2.5 collection, where this is like a movie on it. I'd really say to just get that. So we have Kingdom Hearts Recoded and then a second copy of Recoded. I have two copies of this game. I don't know why. Uh, so this is like the opposite of 358. The story in this game is like meaningless. Like there's no point. But the game itself is really fun. I, I really like this game. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Pokemon Black 2. This is a my favorite Pokemon generation. It's Generation 5. This is the best generation in my opinion. Uh, I don't have Black 1. I need to get Black 1. Black 2 isn't as good as Black 1 in my opinion, but this generation is just so fantastic. There's so much they did right with that. With those games. Dragon Quest 9, Sentinels of the Starry Sky. This is a weird game because I like it, but I also kind of don't like it. I don't know. So this game is really big on multiplayer and things like that. And, you know, nowadays, there's no... he, You know, you'd have to get, like, a buddy who's really committed to playing games with you to play this. Uh, 
So, and the story's not too great either, especially compared to the other Dragon Quest games. But, you know, it's still, I'd still say this is a great starting point for the series. I don't know. And then I have Dragon Quest VI, Realms of Revelation. This was my, this was the first Dragon Quest game I ever played. And, you know, it was a good starting point. Uh, nowadays, I wouldn't recommend it because nowadays, so funnily enough, when I bought this, this was the cheapest Dragon Quest game, okay? This was like a $20 game. And all the others, excluding 9, were like 40 bucks, okay? But nowadays, this is like a $90 game. And all the other ones have just plateaued. They're all like 40 buck games. Uh, 9 is still like a $20 game. Uh... So, that's funny. Um, this was a great place to start for me, but only because I got it for 20 bucks. This is not the best Dragon Quest game ever. Like, if this were the best Dragon Quest game, then I could get it, but... Uh, no. Then we have Dragon Quest V, Sentinels of... No, 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 no. Hand of the Heavenly Bride, my bad. This is the best Dragon Quest game, in my opinion. This game's fantastic. Uh... You know, normally I'd say start with this game, you know, but uh, honestly enough, I wouldn't just because this is the best one. You, you know, you should never start with the best of a series, at least not in my opinion. And then we have Dragon Quest IV. Um, this is Chapters of the Chosen, if I remember correctly, that's the subtitle for this game. I haven't played this one yet, uh, funnily enough. I've actually heard a lot of people say, this is the best Dragon Quest, and uh, 5 is like the runner-up. I haven't played this one yet. I'm really interested in playing it. I'll probably start this after I beat 11, because I'm currently playing through 11. I got Radiant Historia. I haven't played this yet. Uh... I don't know, I don't have a, motiv a lot of motivation to play this because there's a 3DS version nowadays and it has like better graphics and stuff like that. This is uh, Spectrobes Beyond the Portal. So this is really cool. This is the sequel to Spectrobes. Uh, so one really cool thing that I, uh, I want to show, even though I'm going to regret it because I just opened the case, is with like the pre-orders of this game, it came with these cards. And... Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know, they're just cards, but I just thought it's really cool and everything. Uh, I wish, you know, I wish that Disney wouldn't have given up on this. You know, in a, in a perfect world, Spectrobes would have sold really well, and it would be like, you know, the competitor of Pokemon that it should be, because this is such a, you know, unique enough take on the Pokemon formula that I feel like both could work uh, and should exist, but they don't. But, yeah, so, uh, definitely check this game out. It's a lot of fun. I really like Spectrobes Beyond the Portal. It's a lot better than the first one, if I remember correctly. Space Invaders Extreme. Like I said with the second one, this is definitely a game you should own for your DS. Uh, fantastic game. Loved it back when I was a kid. Love it now. One of the big things that I love about this game is that the music... The music's fantastic in the game, but on top of that, like... So, when you play better at the game, the better, like, the music flows better, if that makes sense. Contact. I haven't tried this yet. Uh, you know, I, I've heard that this was worked on by some of the team that made Earthbound, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, so I haven't played this one yet, but I know I'll play it eventually. It looked... Really interesting. Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. This is a pretty good little game. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Wireway. This is kind of shovelware. Uh, yeah, I'd say stay away from it. Not really something you should have in your collection. Unless you're like me. WarioWare Touch. This is a great DS game. Fantastic WarioWare game. Uh, definitely check this one out if you're into WarioWare. Really like that game. Resident Evil Deadly Silence. This is really cool. This is a port of the first Resident Evil. And it's more or less... I don't know if you guys can make out... You know, 
if you guys can tell from that, but it's more or less a one-to-one -one port of the first one. And, you know, if you want to experience the first Resident Evil, like, not the, not the GameCube remake, but, like, the actual first one, this is the one I'd say to get, because, uh, it has none of the problems that the PS1 versions have and whatnot. It has aim assist, all that stuff. So, yeah, definitely check that game out. Thor, God of Thunder. This is a really fun beat -em up Uh, yeah, I'd say check this one out. It's really fun. It was made by Way Forward, so it's got a great soundtrack. Pack Picks. This is a weird game. This was a launch game. You basically just draw Pac-Man and eat the ghosts. Uh, I don't know. I like it. Like, I don't know. Uh, something about Namco games. I just really like Namco, I guess. Alien Infestation. This is a Metroidvania game. I didn't care for this very much. Uh, I don't know. Just the enemies took way too many hits, in my opinion. Uh, I'd probably say, though, if you're interested in this game, just get it now. Because this game is going up and I it's a fairly uncommon game and it's a good DS game and that typically means that it's going to go up in price. Rune Factory 2, fantastic game. Uh, I love the Rune Factory series. I want to get all the other ones at one point, but or at some point, but uh yeah, so far this is the only one I have. Uh fantastic game. I love Rune Factory. <laughs> Golden Sun Dark Dawn. This is the third game of the Golden Sun series. It's the weakest game, but it's still pretty good in my opinion. Uh, I still like it. The World Ends With You. This is probably my favorite Nintendo DS game. This game's so fantastic. Uh, just a great art style, likable characters. Uh, yeah, this is just such a fantastic game in my opinion. If you're if you're a DS collector or you still play DS, you should and you haven't played that game, you should definitely get it. Mr. Driller Drill Spirits. This is more or less just more Mr. Driller, but again, I, I really like Namco. I really like Mr. Driller, so naturally I really enjoy that game. It's just really fun to have Mr. Driller on your DS. Magical Star Stein. I haven't played this yet. This is a RPG that was made by Nintendo, which is really cool. Uh, yeah, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I've heard it's okay. Day Blob 2. This is a really fun uh, 2.5D platformer. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, yeah, check it out. Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. So weirdly, I hate Wind Waker. Like, Wind Waker's an awful game in my opinion, but I absolutely love this game. Uh, my only complaint is the, what's it called, the spirit temple or something like that. The temple you have to keep going back to. That's my only real complaint with this game. Other than that, pretty great. Tokyo Beatdown. Haven't played it. Looked okay-ish. And then lastly, I have Star Fox Command. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty decent little Nintendo DS game. Not really my my cup of tea, but, you know, uh, I know some people who really like it. Alright, so that's my DS collection, you guys. Uh, at this point, you know, excluding getting those loose games that I have complete in the box, uh, you know, there's only a handful of DS games that I really want. So, yeah, uh, have a wonderful night or day whenever you're watching this YouTube. Follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff, and peace.